Right, how are we doing everybody and welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today we're going to be talking about Hogan's basketball throwing analogy. Okay, so recently on the video I've talked about um, creating a video which is called the whip effect, which is very much the natural movement as to what happens in terms of the down cocking of the wrists, but also the rotation of the lead arm to help us get the club face square at the point of impact. Then I kind of produced a video based on timing, which basically was a suggestion very much along the same sort of theme as to how you would find timing in your golf swing. Now, when I've been talking about these, I've been doing most of the demonstrations with just my lead arm. Okay, so I've naturally just been doing these sort of demonstrations in this way, and you can still create a tremendous amount of club head speed at the bottom part of the swing, which is why it's an important thing to kind of understand. My hesitation that I have is that, especially for golfers that are maybe right-handed and right-hand dominant, is that you're going to want to get more of the feelings of this sort of whip effect in terms of this sort of hit by allowing the right hand to roll massively over the left hand too soon in your golf swing. Now, just to clarify, obviously, as soon as you've made contact with the ball, right, and the club face was square at the point of impact, it would be okay for the right hand to start rolling over the top of the left because obviously you've already hit the ball. My concern is, is that if you're actively trying to do this and that's the way you're trying to release the club, then you're making the club face very vulnerable, which means it's not necessarily going to help the club face get square at point of impact all the time. And that's why you're arguably noticing a bit of a discrepancy in your game. So I talked a lot on the channel, okay, which was about the lead arm is going to function with a rotation around the lead arm in this sort of way. So for, a, for my left arm is going to be working in a supination movement, this sort of way coming in towards the hit. And then once I've done this, my lead arm is just going to naturally start to work in space like this. So the club face is not becoming massively manipulated. And I've also kind of documented that the right hand or for my trail hand is going to be acting very much as a supporting mechanism coming in towards the hit. And as it goes through, you can still see the way I'm trying to refrain from trying to create too much of a straightening too soon. And I thought a good way to kind of interpret this is to talk very much about the great man himself, one of Hogan's analogies. And what Hogan was suggesting is that basically it's like a basketball throw. Now, this is a medicine ball, so it's slightly heavier than I wanted it, but you'll get the point. Basically, what Hogan was suggesting is that at the start of the downswing, the kind of right arm would be, or sorry, the right elbow would start to drive in front of the right hip. So you'd end up looking in this sort of fashion. So you can see the way my right forearm is upward facing because it's able to support the basketball itself. Then as you start to come in towards the hit, obviously this is the sort of rotation because the point is you're trying to get the feeling that you're going to throw the basketball down towards your target line. Now, what would happen in the pictures that he's kind of illustrated and what he kind of suggested was that it's important that you lead with your lead hand, which is why Hogan used to talk a lot about creating an element of flexion. And I think this is kind of just what I wanted to make sure in the point of today's video, because you want to throw that ball down towards your target. And that would mean that you would perform very much in this manner. And if you don't have a ball at home, then just imagine that you are holding one and you would find that you would move this way. Now, the reason why this is a great little analogy is because you wouldn't be able to throw the ball straight down towards your target line if you were allowing a rollover too excessively of this right forearm. So if my right forearm started to create too much rotation too soon, it would have a knock-on effect to the delivery to be able to throw this basketball straight down towards my target line. And I think for golfers that are struggling to get a feeling towards impact and are struggling to get this feeling of how do you get the club face square but without being coming too over-dominant with one hand, or this video is definitely for golfers that are actively trying to use their trail hand to get the club face square, as a feeling, it might work okay because you might put it on video and you might actually be more stable than you think. But my concern is that the club face is going to be very vulnerable. And sometimes I see a lot of people advocate, you've got to roll this hand over the other one. Well, inevitably, as you go post-impact, that is going to happen. But coming in towards the pre-impact and post-impact area, you know, up to a couple of feet either side of the ball, you don't want the club face moving unnaturally relative towards that arc. So the club face will naturally create a rate of closure based on the functionality of this lead hand. The last thing you want is this hand to start becoming too dominant because then it's going to become affected. And I think if you're struggling with a feeling, that's my point. Pick up a ball or just imagine that you've got a ball, right? Swing it up towards the top, allow it to drop. And then it's if you're going to throw it down towards the actual 
target itself, inevitably the right hand is going to kind of roll at some point as you swing it through. But as you're coming in towards this kind of releasing area, you wouldn't want to do this too much because it's going to have a knock-on effect towards your delivery. I think that's a good little drill that can be applied pretty much universal. And what I mean by that is whether a golfer comes down on a shallowing arc or whether you come down on a more traditional plane. Either way, really, it's, it's a good feeling to have to be able to understand that your trail hand is acting as a supporting mechanism to not allow the club face to have excessive rotation coming in towards the hit and that you're just allowing that lead hand to feel as though it's kind of throwing the ball down towards the target line. I think it's an important thing to be able to understand and hopefully that kind of little simple tip and something that you can try and emulate even if you're imagining a ball will help you get more of a sense as to what's supposed to be happening at the bottom part of the swing to give you the best chance of getting the club face square but also allowing a natural amount of kind of release coming in towards the bottom part of the swing which is where a lot of the club head speed comes from. As ever, always appreciate a thumbs up on the videos. Um, as I've mentioned on every video, it's absolutely free to send your swings into the channel. Basically, in the description below is where the social media links are, and you just send the swings in. I'll just generally kind of suggest that you've got this little thing wrong, watch this video, and it will give you a good sort of suggestion. Happy to do that for golfers that are willing to put some practice in and try and improve their golf. Um, also free is to press that subscribe button. Press the little bell icon. That means you'll receive notifications every time a new video comes out, and I'll catch up with you again soon.